Right, good afternoon everybody. I'm just starting the next video off and you wouldn't believe it, it's, uh, it's only been six days since you were here. Uh, we got started and we got finished off for the last one. What I've had to do this afternoon is I've had to bring a, uh, a spray up with some chamomile tea. Um, as I say, this is just a cold greenhouse and all I've got in mind is uh, plastic covers. What I did notice this morning is what I popped up is the lettuce I sold last week. There we are, it's all popped through. And the beauty of it is, it's not forced. Nice and cold, just in here. In seeing that cold, I'm talking cold, it's been, we've never had temperatures below 60 in here right through this week because it's been absolutely marvellous. The sun's been shining. But in a cold greenhouse, as I say, you don't need any heat for these whatsoever. And all they'll get now is a good spraying of chamomile tea because they've just broke the surface. Uh, there's no soap in this, but what, what I will be doing tomorrow, I'll be making another spray up because what I noticed in the in the, the large tunnel, the large greenhouse, I was taking some croissant cuttings yesterday and as I nipped them off I noticed there was a few little green fly just started on the tips of them. Well, that means with the weather warming up, it's uh, it's going they're going to be a bit of a pest. So all I'll do with the chamomile tomorrow, I'll put a few drops of washing up liquid in with it, and uh, give them a good spray with that. And as you know, the, the washing up liquid it'll just uh, get in the gills of the green fly and kill them. Uh, far better start them now. Um, when you first get your first sight of them, get straight on top of them, give them the spray, soapy water, and uh, just stop them from breeding. As I say, with the, the temperatures we've had the last couple of uh, the last couple of weeks up here, it's been unbelievable. Yeah. Absolutely red hot. 60, 65s in a cold greenhouse in February. I've never known it. There we are. And there's my kale that I just sowed. Yeah, six days ago. Absolutely fantastic. Nice and strong. As I say, there was 25 seed in the packet, so I split the kale between two pots. And uh, they're nicely spaced out. Plenty of room. Plenty of airflow. Because what you don't want to be doing is you don't overcrowd your seedlings and end up with dampening off. Well, dampening off is one of the worst um, funguses, diseases, whatever you want to call it, they can get. Because one of the main reasons is very cold weather, cold water, really damp conditions, and overcrowding. You, you never want to overcrowd your seedlings. Um, as I say, when I, when I start, start these off, sometimes I like to start them off in multi cell trays. But I thought with just 25 seed, I'll, I'll put them in the pots. But I'm over the moon with them. They're well through there now. Chuck the pieces. Once again, on the internet, loads of pictures of people growing uh, crops in there. They're up, they're up like that, three and four inches high. Uh, some of the cabbages and collies, you don't want that. Not at this time of year. And, one of the main reasons that is the stretching for the light. Um, what you don't want to do is to, uh, is to prohibit any of your plants whatsoever from light. So all, mine always go up on the top shelves and there they'll stop. Now this weekend it's supposed to be cold. Uh, as I say it's turned a bit foggy and a bit cold today compared to what we have had last support night. But there again, plastic tops. Easy as pie, sitting on top of there. Well, this big bench, what I will be doing, because I'll be starting soon tomorrow, uh, a bit, bit late in the day now, because it's starting to get a bit dark now, so what I'm going to start and sewing here tomorrow, once again, just be cold, I'll start the dahlias off. Um, the dahlias are quite a big size, quite a big seed, so we can, we can sew them by hand. Uh, you can sew them in multi cell trays, but what I'm intending to do is just to sew them in, in your ordinary size seed tray. Uh, holes in the bottom, good multi-purpose compost, sharp sand, and a bit of vermic light mixed in with it. Nice free draining mixture. I will be adding my own mix, a uh, bit of potting soil with mine because these are the only seeds, uh, the dahlias, the marigolds, um, that I sow with my own potting mix. As I say, once the weeds start growing through, it's easy enough to pick them out. So you've got to, you've got to start and learn to know your weeds from your seeds, as I say. Which is quite an easy job to do if I can just stretch over there and get one of these pots of leeks, as I say. That, uh, now, these are the new leek I'm trying this year, but uh, 
because it has been growing the cold greenhouse, no heat whatsoever. And already they're putting through there just nicely. That's the seed heads on, but if you can see there's one or two weeds in amongst them. Quite an easy job just to pick them out as they grow. A nice free pot. Once again, you'll just have a coating of uh, chamomile tea and they'll be left to go. My own pot and compost, because of the leaks, they're going to be sitting in here for a good three months. That's why I like a nice deep pot and uh, they're growing well. They don't look much at the moment, but come May, they'll be a foot 18 inches high then and they'll be perfect, pencil thick, perfect for, for planting out. But, uh, and that's that's my method of, of sowing there. Now what uh, what I have noticed up the top end here, when I sow the azaleas, uh, sorry the zinnias, they're all popping through. So once again, I'm really chuffed with them. And what I like to do is I like to catch them early on. Because a good spray of chamomile tea and all that does it gives them a little bit of protection from anything that's lurking. As I say, some of these in have only been in five days. So it just goes to show you what the temperatures have been like in here. They've been absolutely fantastic. Um, I say it's going to turn really cold first time of the year yep, this weekend, so I'll keep my lids handy and ready just to pop one. What you can do, what I normally do, is put a little piece of carpet along here, put the trays on there, what these trays can sit on there, uh, the plastic domes on top of them, and then what you can do, you can layer a uh, newspaper, cardboard, um, Another piece of carpet over the top, and that just gives it added protection. If you're coming up the next day, if you like us, we're up here every day. If I'm not here, Roger's here. So, in the morning, all he's got to do, take a paper off for the polythene, whatever you got on top, remove the lids, and your temperatures should be just fine in here. Uh, it's early on in the morning when the temperatures really plummet down to minus. But by the time the sun gets up here, and it starts uh, warming the place up, it's not too bad. So you can just whip the tops off and whip the paper off or whatever you've got on for extra cover and then leave your plants out. Just we never like to, to leave them on through the day because as I say the condensation builds up and that's, uh, that's one of the, the things you don't want, especially in a cold greenhouse. Where you're taking cuttings and uh, stuff like that fair enough, you need a little bit of moisture in there. But um, that's where the warmth is, it's not going to affect them. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really chuffed for that. So what we're going to crack on with next, we're going to start with the dahlias. Now the dahlias are exactly the same as what I did with the zinnias. You can put them in the multi-cell trays if you want. But what I like to do with mine is just sow them in a, a normal size seed tray. Uh, just mix those holes in the bottom of these. Uh, my multi-purpose compost, uh, with my mix that I make up, with the garden compost mixed in. I will show you this in the next video, uh, how I make my mix up. And I'll be levelling it off, just tamping it down, give it a good soaking first, let it drain off, and then I'll scatter my seed, or space my seed out, because there's only 50 seed in a packet, so 50 seed will fit a, a, a standard size seed tray, no problem. So we'll get them we'll get them sown in there, and we'll give them a light covering of vermic light and compost. Now the other seeds that I'll, I mean to get started on this week, I will include them in the video. Um, they're, a, they're a funny seed to grow. Yeah, the lobelias, if I've got my daisy here somewhere, yes, no I haven't, um, I did have them here, but they seem to have disappeared again. Um, the lobelias and the petunias, oh, I saw them a completely different way. I start with a multi, uh, full size seed tree, exactly the same, level it out, the compost, once again soaking it wet. And then all I do is I go along and make a row, probably three or four rows, depending on how many seeds in a packet. A good pack of lobelia probably end up with 2,000 seeds in a packet. So I'll make four rows, and all I'll do is I'll press a pencil into the moist compost all the way along. So there's four rows, and then I'll sow the seeds along in them rows. They don't like being prohibited from light. Um, 
these are the three main ones that are growing that don't get prohibited from any light so don't get it covering all they'll get is a handful of perlite just sprinkle over the top of them and so that helps the seed anchor to, to the moist compost and that's all they'll get and then once again they'll get a uh, they'll get a seed cover like that over the top of the tree just in here in the cold greenhouse and they'll just be left to grow away uh, no problem as you say the bilia petunia and of course my all time favourite the Swan River Daisy I'll sow these three sets of seedlings exactly the same way sometimes I'll use an alsum um, alsum can be sown exactly the same way just in rows and what it means is when you sow them in rows the moisture will not build up so much as when you broadcast them you're going to get some airflow in between the rows so when they do start growing you'll not have any problems with dampening off or you shouldn't be if you use a calmite tea like I do you shouldn't have any problems with them dampening off because once, once dampening off hits them trays of, uh, of seedlings you can lose the full tray in a matter of hours so this is just one of my um, one of my little tricks that I use um, for sowing these seed as I say the, the dahlia, the, um, the lobelia is uh, one of the funniest um, seeds to grow but uh, once once you get the hand of growing them uh, you'll never look back that easy um, and I'll be showing them exactly the same way and the petunias so what we'll do that in the next part of the video uh, we'll get them out of the way for the time being because what I have got to do before I go back down I've got to build a little frame outside here because I intend to put the peach tree at this, at this end of the tunnel uh, why it's going at this end because this is the north end of the tunnel I don't want to put it down there at the south end and of course block the sunshine from coming over so I'll build, them, I'll build it at the north end and what I will do at the bottom poly tunnel I'll put the cherry tree in there I was going to plant the cherry tree in the garden but I think I'm, I'm going to risk putting it in the tunnel because I've got a nice big spread I've got a big 8 foot bed there so I'm going to make a nice framework and I'm going to grow the cherry tree on, a, on the south end of that bed so I'm uh, it's all good stuff anyway, it's, uh, it's all trial and error but um, we're going to crack on with that next so I'm going to get a get bit of framework put up get it all painted up and then I'll get the um, I'll get the peach tree planted first and then followed by the cherry but uh, as I say, I'm still seed sown at the moment so I'm <coughs> it's a jolly enough, I've got pot enough to do I've got uh, cuttings in the, in the propagator um, seedlings to do, so you know it's a busy time of the year but um, what you need to do is to get yourself a little calendar or a little book and just mark down what you're doing keep a note of it and then for for following years um, you'll know exactly what time you sowed them um, and, and of course the mistakes that you're going to make which everybody does the makes that you do make you'll make sure you don't make them again the following year but uh, keep a notebook handy I'm fine because uh, as I say all mine goes down on video so I'll uh, and after a few years of gardening, you just start to get the hang of things, you know, you start to pick things up, you do things the way you want to do it, you know, you might find a completely different way from some of us, the way we grow, um, which is fine, everybody's got a different idea, but uh, you'll pick up your, your tips and your hints along the way, and uh, as I say, one of them for today is, give your seedlings merging through, give them a good spray of camomile tea, and that'll keep them nice and clean, so I've got them done, there's no sign of the perennials coming through yet, so of course these have only been in a couple of days so I'm just keeping, a, keeping an eye on them um, just making sure there's plenty of moisture in them the, the, the water that they had when I first put the seed in should last them for the, for the time being of it, until they start coming through um, I'm hoping they will anyway but once they start emerging, once again they'll get a spray of fair chamomile tea so yeah, that's it all good for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crack on outside and get a little bit of framework built, and then we'll get there. Uh, we'll get cracking on this uh, on this peach tree. Completely different way to the apple. We're going to grow it as a fan, not in a spalier. So uh, we'll crack on with it soon. Okay. Right. So good afternoon, everybody. Well, hopefully, um, if this weather holds off a little bit, I'll be able to get this video finished. Um, what me and Roger managed to do this morning, we have getting up, up the plot and uh, we've managed to get the the, uh, the peach tree in I would say it's a completely different way of growing it from what we've done with the apples uh, we're growing the apples this spalier way uh, from the sides but with the peach we're going to grow it fan trained and uh, all we've done this morning is we'll put a, a 4 by one framework up and uh, join, it up to the, join it up to the roof 
nice and tight and uh, two cross members all the way across and uh, really easy it's uh, it's nothing um, nothing too difficult just uh, just basic joinery as you see if, if you know anybody that's handy with a hammer and then it's uh, it's a quite an easy job to do I'm going to try and wedge this door shut because um, as you know storm freer's on the way I'm just going to put this on there and stop it from blowing I know it's a little bit chilly as I say I've come back up this afternoon just to uh, put a good drop of water on this um, 401 just buttons from uh, from an old pallet uh, or from, from a new pallet I should say pulled all the nails out and we've just, we've just rigged it up it's nice and solid, it's fixed to the roof, it's fixed to the side of the tunnel and all I've got in is a centre, one centre, good strong key in the middle there and what I'm doing, I've, I've laid bamboos from the sides here and as they grow, as the sides just come out we just add more bamboos, so it's a nice fan shape what I have done, I've cut everything off that was on the front um, I've just left one on there just to show you just one little stem come with that'll be cut off and all I've left is three one two three four side shoots I will usually just get nipped at the bud like we had in the apples we'll just uh, we'll just nip them off there so what will happen here is it will break away there from the from that stem and you'll get two two leaves two branches come away from there and then that way you can fill the whole frame out with, with branches you will get branches come from the bottom we can bend that down to meet the to meet the other frames or the um, the other canes, and then what will happen is they'll completely cover the whole framework, hopefully in about three years' time. Like you see, it's an easy job to do. Just tie a few bamboos to it, and just as it, as the branches grow, tie the branches to your bamboo, and you cover the whole framework. You see, this is a good eight foot by six foot, so it's a it's a really good size framework uh, just for a for a small peach tree. Um, this is north facing at the end of the tunnel, so it's not going to stop any light from coming over. Um, a couple of years' time, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I'm hoping to get a, a small crop of it, um, maybe it's next year. I'm not, I don't think we'll probably this year because I'm going to cut these back and hopefully get two or three branches grown from the ones that's on at the moment. But that's the idea of the fan train. It's tied up here at the moment, but these can be easy cut off. It's only soft twine. These can be easily cut off as the tree grows out and retied. Uh, I like to wait for a tree to get over three, four years old before I even consider putting their proper tree ties on because they're really heavy uh, to do the job, keeping well, well and truly fastened to that, to that post. But I just like to use soft twine when the trees are, are really young. But uh, you can see the first couple have been tied in there. That one will get tied in there. And no doubt we'll get a couple grown from where. So that's what piece of tree. Well chuck for that, it's in there now. Um, and as I say we've taken up no room. All we used here is, is a foot of space in from the bottom, uh, out from the end of the bed, and built over that framework and it's there. Uh, so it's gonna be there for years to come. Well chuck for that. So as you can hear the wind's uh, starting to pick up there a bit, but as uh, that's uh, a storm free after it's gonna hit with tonight and tomorrow. So really I wanna uh, I wanna crack on here. And uh, try and get as much as I can done before that day, before the storm hits. No doubt I'll not be able to get anything done tomorrow if it is, really is uh, hard work there. Uh, for the time being, I'm going to pop up the end of the greenhouse now and I want to finish up sowing these few seeds that I started at the beginning of the video. Okay? Right, well, good afternoon, everybody. As you can hear, no wind. Storm free I passed over last night and uh, fortunately no damage. There's a couple of little couple of little splits in the polythene roof there but uh, no doubt my nice son will come up the weekend and uh, nail them back on. Put a couple of laps down and uh, fix it down. Uh, I don't think the winds are too bad. 50, 60 miles an hour here in the northeast. But uh, heavy rain right through the night. Uh, there's a, still a little bit of wind blowing there now, the day later, but um, I postponed filming down there because it, it got such bad, such a, uh, such strong in the afternoon that I just I stopped filming. I thought, well, I come up the next day and carry on. I managed to finish the peach tree off, and uh, all I did with that, once we got it in and got it in its framework, 
is put a couple of handfuls of bone meal in the actual planting hole, uh, cover it in, a bit of horse manure, and give it a really good watering in, really soaking it in. And it's, uh, it's tied up. It's, uh, the bamboos are in their place now, nice fan trained, and as I say, I'll show you how to go along with pruning them over the next few months. Uh, totally different from the apple trees from the espalier. Uh, totally different way of growing them, but uh, exactly the same method you're, uh, you're growing. A nice tree with as little space used as possible. When, when you're just planting in the garden, the, the canopy is going to come right over and uh, it shallows a lot of land, takes a lot of land up, uh, so you, you, you're reduced from planting underneath it. So the idea of growing them as foliar or fan train is that you get as much crop as you can just from there. Uh, and it's only, it's only a foot wide and that's all it'll be. At the most it'll come out next to a couple of inches. You keep the side shoots well pruned down and that'll be fine. So I've caught this afternoon and what I've been doing, I've been uh, planting the dahlias. The dahlias now these are just the bedding dahlias. And as I say, as I always say, get your packets are fantastic. And a great wealth of information on them. Um, and to me, I always look for the seed count. Now with the dahlias, uh, these aren't the big show ones, these are just the, the pom pom ones, or the, uh, the dress ones for the garden. Just uh, they're great for buying your borders, beds and borders. Just for a nice, nice spot of colour for midsummer and late autumn. Fantastic. With the, all I do is I fill an ordinary size seed tray, a uh, quarter of an inch from the top, and then with these seeds, with these seeds they're, they're, uh, as I say, they're a good size, you can tip them out in your hand, and all I need like to do is to, is to, in my mind, is to make four rows in the mind, and you've got 150 seeds, so it's not hard to distribute that in between four rows. So all I do is I just start spreading them out, one row, and then the second row, I'll go in between them, and the third row in between them, and the fourth row. So they're domino fashion, all over the, the full length of the tree and the width of the tree. Now what I like to do with these, is just give them a light covering with the same compost, with a bit of multi-purpose, uh, multi-purpose compost uh, with a sharp sand in and of course some perlite in so it's nice and light and with the daily I can just sprinkle it over by hand don't need anything else and give them a good quarter inch of fair covering and they're fine they'll go, now they'll go down on the bottom uh, with one of my covers just my plastic covers so it'll sit over that and they'll go down the cold greenhouse now that's the difference with them they can, they can go down where the zinnias are exactly the same and just sit in the cold greenhouse uh, these ones are going to be exactly the same, and these are one of my all-time favourites. Uh, this one, River Daisy. Uh, once again, you look at the seed count, uh, there's 150 seed in there, in the packet. Now what I like to do with these, I mean look, 25p for a packet, for 150 seed, well, 175, you cannot beat them for value. Uh, what I like to do with these, um, I get my compost once again, it's a quarter inch below the, the bottom of the tray, and I like to just get an old bit of bamboo and mark out three, depending on your seed count, or four rows over these. I'll use two packets of these, put them together. That's a good 300 and odd seed. So between them, they're going to get 150 seed or 120 seed in each row. And just sprinkle them along along the rows and the idea of this being is when they start growing up they get nice you get a nice row of seedlings and you're getting the air between the seedlings if you were just to sow these um multi multi sow over the top of them just broadcast them uh, what what can, what tends to happen is you get them um, if you get dampening off uh, if you've got cold wet compost no air flow you're gonna you're gonna experience dampening off of the seedlings yeah, so what I like to do with mine, sow them in rows, and the air can get through them. And the first sign of them emerging is what, I've, is what I did with the beginning of the, the, um, beginning of the video, with the zinnias. The first sign of the seedlings emerging, go across them with a chamomile tea and give them a damn good spray, damn good soap of that, and that sets them up fine. Uh, the other ones I had to do was like the labelia and the petunia. Now they're completely different. I do it exactly the same way in the rows, three rows, but they don't get covered. Whereas these ones are getting a light covering just like the Delia did. I'll use a sieve on them. I've got a, I've got a small sieve somewhere. Um, I'm checking it off when I want it. I've got a small sieve there, it is. I've got a little sieve there. And uh, 
The multi-purpose compost, as I say, it'll go into there, and it'll just get a, a light seven over the top of them. And that's the uh, that's the Swan River Daisy. Now the the big goat there, the the uh, Labelia and the Petunias are completely different. They'll go in the rows again, exactly the same in the rows, but they'll not get covered with any compost. All they'll get is a handful of um, white perlite, just a very light sprinkling of perlite over the top, and that doesn't prohibit any light from getting to the ceilings. The only difference with these ones, they'll go in the heat. They'll go down there where the leaks are, where it's about 50 55, and that's perfect for them. Once again, they'll get a plastic cover over the top of them, and they'll sit where the heat is, so it's not dropping below 40 down there every evening. It's uh, just that little bit of heat to get them started. Um, if you've got a propagator, or a, but I tend to think that when you put them in propagators, they, they tend to push them up too quick and you get very leggy ceilings. Um, but the, there again, if you put them in rows, they're getting as much light as they can, and it's going to prevent them from growing too leggy. I always say if you get your ceilings up on the top here, now I just noticed that one, that's, that's been sitting up here since a week ago, freezing cold, and that's a giant Swede that I got from Dean Hood, from Dean's Oster Plot. And already I'm a popping through, so it's just the one I come up today, because what I want to do is get them a spray calamine tea. But they're up on the top shelf here. All my seedlings do exactly the same thing. Doesn't matter what part of the greenhouse they're in. If they're in the tunnels, I've got top shelves. If they're in the, the, the heated greenhouse, I've got top shelves. And I've got the cold greenhouse, top shelves. They're always right up here where the light is. Now what's the job I've got to do today? Once again, I showed you them last week. And, and there, there's me winter sweet peas that I sowed in, in autumn. Fantastic. Now they're coming out today. What would me and Roger have done down there? We've cleared the back shelf, all the timbers, all the old pots, trays, everything. And then these are going to sit on the back shelf. They've got a little bit of plastic cover over the top, but they're right out in the fresh air. So they'll sit out there for another fortnight now, and then they'll be ready for transplanting into the garden end of March. Fantastic. So they're ready. Um, as I say, it's a busy time for seedlings. There's absolutely tons to be done. I've just done another two trayfuls of sweet pea. Yeah, the summer ones, they're just in small pots. Uh, I've got cuttings to take, I've got seeds to sow, and I've got to start getting the outsides ready. The, um, the Japanese onion bed's got to be hoed and weed, weeded out. It's got to have a, a handful of um, negro chalk around it, and it's got to get the two sides ready for planting out the first seedlings, which is the, uh, the parsnips. I always like to sow them in the middle of March. Elsewhere in the country, you may be sowing them a little bit earlier, but up here in the northeast, middle of March is fine for us. So we'll get them in. They can be a difficult crop to grow parsnips, because a lot of people put them in, and uh, they take a outside, they take quite a while to come through. Um, in the meantime, you could have quite a lot of seed, weed growing up amongst them, so a lot of people get confused as what's what's what. But my tip for them is, I'll show you, is to just to put a line along, a string line, you don't have to use one of your good ones that you use all the time. Just a bit of string and a couple of bits of stick. Stick them in, put your seeds in, and leave the line in. So you know where the line is. You know where that line of seedlings is. And once they start growing through, if you're just new to the game, and you don't know what parsnips are like when they come through, as I say, you can pick the weeds from either side of the line, and then once they start growing through, you'll get an idea. They look like parsley when they're just young little seedlings. And, um, that's just another little tip, rather. Than, I'll explain all that next week when we start sowing the parsnips. Uh, as I say, I want to crack on the right because I've got loads to do. I want the Lobelia sown, I want the Petunia sown, but they'll go down in the heat, like I say. Um, I'll finish the last of the Dahlias off, which will go in the cold in the melon house, and uh, I'll get the last of the Swan River Daisy. But this, um, I've got my marigolds to sow. Now, my marigolds will get sown exactly the same as the Dahlia. They'll just be broadcast in a large tray. Uh, now, they're my own marigold seed that I saved from last year, so they, I've got a big tub of them, so I'll sow four trays of them, the marigolds, and exactly the same with the dahlia, I do not put off at seedling stage. I'm a great believer in that. If, if you get a nice deep tray like that, and you've got good compost, now this is my own compost, uh, with plenty of feed in it, them seedlings will grow way well. So they'll not be transplanted until a nice young little plant. Uh, I know a lot of people say when you're, when you're starting off, you always transplant at, at the seedling stage. I never do with the dahlias. And I never do with my marigolds, which I'll show you in later videos as we go on. I'll let them grow up a nice good size before. I can just pull a root apart, empty this tree out, and it'll be full of root. I can just pull them plants apart, nice little bunches, and then I'll repot them up into a six or a 
or a seven or an eight centimetre pot and uh, fantastic for planting out in the middle of the end of May which up north here is about the right time. Uh, the tune is in that a bit later, the is a little bit later because the frost tender so it'll be great for the hanging baskets the first week in June but uh, we, can do, we can deal with all that later on. Um, compost, right here we are absolutely absolutely fantastic and that's if you're not able to see the colour of that, it's, it's jet black, it's absolutely beautiful. Now that is all the compost bins, believe it or not. Roger just emptied one out last week and pushed it all through the sieve. So, for a beautiful two year old compost. So, what I do with mine, when I make my compost up, look for a pot, using size pot, does my, does my what size you use, um, to measure out. What I normally do is I do a 3 2 and one mix. Now I'll make, make mine in the cement mixer because I use bagfuls of it so I'm, I'm doing mine by the bag I know what, what, what my measurements are. But if you haven't got a cement mixer and you don't want to make this mix as big as ours is a little black pot will do just as fine. So what you want to say and, and of course depending on how much mix you're going to make if you want a smaller mixer then just use a smaller pot by all means until you, you, until you get used to what you're making what mixes you need you know, the size of the pot will matter. So we've got three pots of multi-purpose compost, two pots of good garden compost, a good garden soil sieved, and a good bucket full of sharp sand and grit. And to that, I depending on the size of your mix, I add a couple of handfuls of good bone meal. Mix it in, a little bit of perlite or a little bit of vermiculite if you've got it, mix some of that in, just like this mix is here, that's already made up, and that, that'll feed anything. Now I don't use that mix when I'm putting the labelia in or the plant uh, petunias because the simple reason I'm going to have weeds coming through. Now, petunias are very parky and labelia are very parky. They're a very small seed. So in rows of them, I'll just use a mix yet of um, multi-purpose compost and sharp sand without my mix, without my putting compost. And uh, with, with that I find it just it grows just nicely and then you can pick them off in little clumps out of that row. Um, you don't want too much weed getting. Whereas with the gilias, if you're getting weeds growing through, it doesn't make any difference because you can see the weeds long before the gilias uh, get a decent size. So you can pick the weeds out, like I do with most things. Pick the weeds out, then the rest are fine. As I showed you with the leaks down there, there's little weeds coming through, but you just take a pot up and pick them out. And that's the only difference in my mixes. Um, what does it say? If you want to make a mix up like what we do, it's a 3 2 one mix and uh, you can grow anything. I've used this mix for years and uh, I've never had any never had any problems with it. Uh, I grow everything with it. I'll only pot it on when I'm potting off um, tomatoes, cucumbers, anything else. When they're going into the big buckets, I'll use exactly the same mix, but I'll put in a couple of bucketfuls of horse manure. Mix all that in, and it's a fantastic mix, and they'll sit in them pots. They don't have to be fed for about six or eight weeks after that, and sometimes even longer. But, uh, Really good compost, so yeah. So I'm uh, I'm chuffed with that. I'm chuffed I'm getting a good start in the seedlings. Yeah, I'm gonna go down home because I've got a few more leaks to pot up. I've got some onions to pot up. Well, at least down here I've got the heat on. Uh, I've got my light on, so it's starting to get light up here in the northeast till about half past five, six o'clock at night. It's not too bad, so we're uh, we're getting on better. Loads of comments online um, on our YouTube channel. A lot of new subscribers, so I'm uh, I'm over the moon with that. If you're getting something from the from the videos, well, I'm over the moon. Like I say, chuck the pieces. So keep keep subscribing, keep sharing, and uh, keep commenting. Don't forget to comment on below. Get back here as soon as we can. If you can't wait for the videos coming out, get us on up my Facebook channel, which is uh, Jeff Fulmer on the plot. Send me a request, and we'll uh, we'll get you on the plot, and we're there every night. Lots of people commenting sharing our pics or whatever and uh, you can talk every night of the week if you don't want to wait for the videos coming out but I will make an effort to try and get a video out um, every night this week uh, every every week this year um, I know last year with having my accident I was uh, I was a little bit put off I didn't get as much done as I would have liked but um, yeah we've got high hopes for this year I'm getting a lot better I'm not perfect but I'm getting there I'm still uh, still got my frame on my leg I'm still on walking sticks but uh, at least I can see what he's doing 
I'll get most of the work done in the greenhouse and Roger's is outside doing a lot of work outside so we're well prepared for the season. So we're going to crack on. We've got loads of ideas to do this year. So hope, stick with me and uh, enjoy the journey with us throughout the, the garden here. Uh, as I say, we've got loads of new, lots of new ideas to share with you this year. So uh, just stick with me and uh, we'll have a good time. But if you've got any comments, any questions, down below. Don't forget to comment and we're, we're quite happy to get back here and um, share our experiences with you. So for the time being, I'm going to crack on with the last of these seedlings. Maybe just get a bit more potting up next very, very far tomorrow because I've still got leeks and onions to pot up up here. Yeah, croissant cuttings, I've got the last of the croissants to take, so loads to do. Yeah, never ending. And we will start uh, next week because all the cabbages, colliers and kale are all through, so by next week they'll be one potting off. So that's another video. But yeah, for the time being, um, keep on sharing, keep on subscribing, and uh, just enjoy yourselves on the plot, okay? See you all again soon.